Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and posse. I'm your host, Tiffany, and we are going to get real behind the scenes today of entrepreneurship. I've been really excited to share this episode. I feel that the timing is divine. And so many of you need to really hear this, especially from someone like me, where you know, I'm going to truly be open and give you a look, not just a peek behind the curtain of the reality of entrepreneurship, the things that no one tells you. I see some people going, oh, this is what it looks like to have a bad day when you own a business. And it's like they show you one day, one glimpse, one sliver of it. And let me tell you something. There are fully bad weeks. There's even a, There can even be a bad month. And I'm not sharing this to deter you from starting your business or to deter you from going all in or to starting a new one, starting your first one. But these are things that I wish someone told me so that I didn't feel so alone in it and that maybe something was wrong with me. I wasn't meant to have my own business. I wasn't meant to do this. I wasn't well equipped to do it. I was an idiot. Um, What was I thinking? I know there's a lot of you who are at that point. Whether you are doing affiliate marketing, you're in a network marketing business, you've even had your business for several years now or even a long time. Maybe you have pivoted your business. Maybe you've started a second one, you know, like I did two and a half years ago. And it can really feel like crap when you're looking on social media or, you know, people that you know in your life who are very successful in having their business, even if it's not in the same industry or niche as yours. It can, if you're not doing as well as you want to, whether it is financially or it's just not coming as easily um, or you're just having a lot of problems, it can bring up a lot of shame. It feels like, God, what is it? It seems like everything they touch turns to gold. And I I guess I just don't have that magic touch. Maybe I'm not meant to be doing this. Maybe I was crazy to even think I could do this. Who in the hell am I to think I could do this? You know, I don't have this. And then we start focusing on all the things we don't have, right? I don't have a degree. I don't have the right credentials. I'm only this age. I'm too old to be doing this. You know, I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too this, right? Like, I'm not well spoken. I'm not a good writer. I'm too shy. I'm too introverted. And then we start picking ourselves apart of all the things that we aren't because of what we see externally. Uh, I know some of you listening right now, wherever you are, whether you're at work with the one AirPod in, you're multitasking, cleaning, you're working out, you're going, oh God, yep, she's in my head. And it just feels like crap. And I, I wish, I wish there was someone that said to me, like, Tiffany, this is part of it. 
Like this is those really crappy beginning years of business. There's exciting parts and exhilarating parts, but those growing pains are real. And it doesn't happen when you want them to. It doesn't happen when it's convenient. It doesn't happen where it's predictable, where you can plan for it. It's not like, oh, this happened on a Friday and I have the weekend to regroup. Um, sometimes it's two weeks. Sometimes it lasts a month. Sometimes it is just an afternoon meltdown. <laughs> Number one, all those feelings come up when you're going after your dreams because you want them so badly, because it is your calling to do so, because you care so much about the people you will help and impact. That's why it happens. Right. So when you're working for someone else, which, you know, a lot of you listening do and and some people love that. Right. And you love your career. Some of you are wanting to get out of it and you're good at it, but you don't really love it. That's where I was at. Right. I didn't hate it. You don't have to hate your job to leave it, to have to start a business. It can just no longer fulfill you. Right. It it can no longer, you know, light light you up. And when we're doing things that really aren't our calling, that we're not passionate about, that we don't have a special soul driven energy towards, you're not going to get that upset. Like if work wasn't that great that week, even if you have a business, I mean, my other business that I've had 12 years, um, it stopped lighting me up. Very good at it. I, I wouldn't, you know, I still have the business. Um, excellent at it. I have a lot of amazing, great long-term clients. Um, There's a lot of things I love about it. There's a lot of things I don't like anything else in life. But I knew it wasn't my calling. It wasn't my purpose. Um, It was a vocation, right? It was a great, it's a great way to bring in a lot of money. Um, It's intellectually stimulating. Um, It serves a great purpose because it taught me Um, It taught me to really refine my skills in working with clients, in sales, in digital marketing and things like Facebook ads, copywriting, you know, taught me a lot of great things and, and continues to. But it was time for me to follow what I was, you know, meant to start, which is Project Me with Tiffany Carter. But you guys know I've had this. I had the name, the idea, the concept, the mission for 10 years. It took me 10 years to start this business. 10. That's why I repeat and shout from the rooftops to you guys. Don't think when you say, okay, I'll really get serious and go all in on my business in January because then this whole you know COVID thing will be over. Or I'll do it after the holidays or I'll do it after the summer when my kids are back in school or when my kids go to college or my kids go into high school, when I lose weight, um, when I, you know, divorce my husband and you come up with all these things, me too. And then one month turns to five, which turns to a year, which turns into two. Some of it's divine timing, right? Like to be in integrity with Project Me with Tiffany Carter and to teach you guys how I teach you, the style I teach you, the space that I hold, I wouldn't have been ready to have started that 10 years ago, but I would have been ready four years ago, right? So I would say there's a solid, I could have started about, I could have started about a solid four years, well, not four years soon. Yeah. 10 years. I had it for 10 years before I started it. Yeah. We're d- Tiffany's doing math in her head. <laughs> That's dangerous. Um, four years sooner, I could have started it. Four years is a long fucking time. Project Me with Tiffany Carter has really only been around two and a half years. And look at the amazing success that it's had and how many people it's thousands and thousands of people it's impacted and helped. I could have helped so many more. I could have brought in millions of dollars more at this point. I mean, I can't focus on that looking back, but I want to share that with you because though time goes by. I mean, how in the hell are we already in fall in 2020? How did this happen? I mean, who else feels like it was a blur going from the beginning of quarantine life in March to now. It's like, what just happened? 
How are we already here in fall? Why are there already Christmas bows for sale at Costco? Unacceptable. Like, can they just push that shit back? Like, to normal time, just so we don't feel so panicked. But if you're already, you know, at this time in 2020, you're already here and you know you still have not achieved the goals that you put out for yourself, the things that you've wanted to go forward with in your business or starting your business. And you have, you're still in that spot where you're spinning, you're stuck, you're doing research, analysis, paralysis, but you're not in real action. You really have nothing, nothing or not much to show for it at this point. Well, when, when are you going to do it? When is the right time for you to go all in and something that you want? Another year from now, another two years from now, what are you going to do? First thing I would say is take real strong action now. I wish someone taught me that early on. I didn't toe dip as we talk about. I mean, I went all in. This wasn't a jobby for me. You know, when I went from um, being an employee to an entrepreneur and did that six month transition, I mean, I was all in. But you can be all in without any strategy and any guidance. And that's where I was, which is insane. What that looks like is working 12 to 14 hours a day, six, seven days a week, doing a lot of busy work and not getting anywhere, hearing a lot more no's than yeses, frustrated, beating your head against the wall, many meltdowns, wanting to quit, not understanding why it's working, not knowing what to do, throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping something sticks, doing deep dives into like Google University, and then spending hours and hours doing that. And it gets really damn old after a while. And that's where I was. I wish someone said to me, Tiffany, off the bat, you need to hire somebody who is where you want to be at to shave off time to really help you with your preserve your energy from losing your mind from wanting to quit to give you a a clear roadmap so that you don't spend years you've already waited years to start the damn thing you've already waited too long to start the damn thing so now you're going to waste more years and trial and error when i could have just hired somebody to have shown me the way now I give myself grace with this because I actually that wasn't a thing, right? That wasn't a thing 12 years ago, really wasn't a thing nine years ago. Um, I didn't even know there were such a thing as business coaches. I knew there were people who did like personal development, like the Tony Robbins of the world. But I thought that was more on mindset and inner work, which was very important. Um, I didn't understand the difference of personal development work and therapy. So in my mind, I was like, well, I'm already you know, many years deep in therapy. And I have, you know, I have my spiritual um, coach, my spiritual guru for manifestation and abundance. So I, I did have a therapist and I had a spiritual coach, private coach. I had him for eight years in therapy. I mean, God knows. I mean, a bazillion years. I I did not know there was someone I could go to as a small business owner, right? It's not like I'm hiring some big cons- business consulting firm. But as a small like solo startup operation, there was someone that could guide me that I could even pay. Um there were people I could go to and ask some questions to, but I always felt like I was bothering them. I mean, that's part of being a codependent on top of it. But I mean, I thought I was bothering them. It felt it didn't feel good to me. So I would have something I wish someone said to me is, you know, I don't care if you have to put it on a credit card, what you have to do, do it right from the start, you're gonna you're gonna save yourself a ton of time, you're gonna end up saving yourself a ton of money. And you're not going to lose your mind and you're going to enjoy the ride much better. Now, some of you hearing this can go, well, that's self-serving because you're a business coach. Well, you can think it's self-serving if you want. I'm a business coach because I feel so strongly in my soul that part of what I went through set me up to pay it forward to be that business coach to you, to be what I wish I had at the different levels of my business, right? So there's two different levels I work with. 
I have my two month exclusive program for new entrepreneurs who are making between zero and $10,000 a month. So you can be starting from scratch all the way to $10,000 a month. And then I have my established entrepreneur two month program, which is over $10,000 a month consistently. Because those are two very different strategies. And I could just work with established entrepreneurs, but that's that doesn't feel right to my soul. I like working wherever you're at to get you to the next level. But I created a company and a profession out of what I wish I had. So yeah, you can think it's self-serving, but it's not. It's outward. It's outward serving. I'm really that passionate that you guys need that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be. I don't need to do. I don't need to have Project Me for cash. I don't. I could just stick with my 70% of my income coming from passive income and then focus on my other company, my seven figure business. Um, I could have done that, but I obviously couldn't. It wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't working for me anymore. And it was time. So that's the first thing I want to tell you. You can ask, there are people you can ask, maybe you have someone in your life, an uncle or someone who's an entrepreneur, and there's some people you can ask um, for guidance, or you could ask me a question in my comments on Instagram or DM me these one-off questions. And that's fabulous. I think you should, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to ask questions, um, not take advantage and do brain picking because we know I charge $8 a minute to pick my brain. Um but there's something different that happens when you pay for that help and support. You show up differently. You don't feel weird about asking for help, receiving help. It it actually puts you into action. You don't want to waste that money. You respect that person. You don't want to waste their time. You have skin in the game. So now you're a true investor in your company when you're putting cash on the line. It took me five years into my business before I hired a business coach. Number one, I didn't know they really existed. Number two, I had a limiting belief that I needed to figure it out on my own because if I couldn't figure it out on my own, then I wasn't worthy of being an entrepreneur. I have, I don't know if any of you guys feel this way. I thought an entrepreneur, I should look up the definition. There was something, and I, I know it has to do with how I was raised too, but it was something like I thought an entrepreneur meant like you, yes, you have a you have your own business, but I thought part of the role of it is that you knew how to do every single job and you figured out how to do every single thing in your business, or you have no right to be in it, you're a failure, um, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there where is no evidence supporting that, but I really believed that. So you should have seen all the tech shit I tried to figure out. I mean, it was absolutely insanity. How many hours I wasted that I we can't get back that time, right? How much unnecessary energy I burned trying to figure shit out on my own. I would do a whole thing and then it wouldn't work. Plus it was my ego. I mean, here in the pharmaceutical world, you know, I'm an executive. I'm a award multiple award winning sales professional right <laughs> sales trainer sales manager all these things yet in 18 months of having my business i only sold two fucking clients and i probably i probably pitched like 80 companies only two and it was like that is not good and it's it's truly because I didn't I didn't have the support. I didn't understand. I didn't understand the difference of what it was like when you're trying to get clients for your own business versus when you're working for someone else. It is very different energetically. Um, it is very it's a very different feeling when you're like, oh, my God, if I don't get a certain amount of clients, I'm I'm not going to be able to eat or pay my mortgage. That's a totally different feeling. And I needed guidance, yet I was so in self-will. I really refused to get it. I really did. I was pushing it away energetically and subconsciously. And that's why it took five years for my business coach to land in my life. And, and he really like was put in front of my face. 
when I didn't ask him, it was like, you need help. It's very obvious. And I mean, I was like, I may have teared up. I remember where I was. I don't remember if I teared up. I was in Las Vegas, like most things. (laughs) Those of you who are new to me, I basically lived between Las Vegas and Los Angeles for a solid um, 12 years. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I didn't have a home in Vegas. I lived on the strip in hotels. I mean, out of control. Ton of my clients there. And then in the corporate world, um, Vegas was part of my territory. Back and forth, back and forth. So a lot of a lot of shit's gone down in Vegas. <laughs> a lot of shit's gone down. A lot of I've made a lot of money in that town, but a lot of shit's gone down there. And it was like I, I mean, if I didn't tear up on the outside, I was tearing up on the inside. It was like I finally surrendered for where it was like, I do need help. You can't do this alone. And if you somehow have a belief that you need to, my guess is in other areas of your life, you have that belief. You're still cleaning your whole damn house yourself versus really taking a look at how much time and energy you spend cleaning your house when you could hire you know, a service to help you. My guess is that if you're trying to do your business yourself without help and without guidance, that you're also doing that um, where you're doing for everybody else in your life and you're being put in last place. That belief doesn't just show up in actions and decisions in your business life. It's showing up in all areas of your life. It actually shows great vulnerability and great strength to have help. I will not invest in any company in anyone else's business, big or small, no matter how hot a startup is. I will not invest unless I know the people at the top of that company, the people in the executive chain, or that, you know, main CEO or founder doesn't have multiple coaches. I want to know that they're humble enough to know that they need consistent support and that they value it, and that they're willing to listen to other people's guidance, and that they know that they don't have all the answers, and they know they can't do it alone. Otherwise, I won't invest. Because you can't run and grow a sustainable business all on your own, you'll lose your mind. And I'm, I'm stubborn as fuck. And I, I don't, I don't even know how I made it those five years. Well, that's not true. I do know. I was in the throes of my exercise addiction. So I used that. I was using work, like workaholism as an escape. Sugar, alcohol, I'm for sure some drugs, partying, um, jumping from relationship to relationship. I mean, I I was truly a mess. I was truly a mess and I wanted to quit all the time and it was miserable. Well, why in the hell would you start a company Why in the hell would you start a business in order to have freedom of time, freedom of money, freedom of creativity, freedom of expression, and now create your own self-imposed prison? That's exactly what I did. I said all the time, oh my God, being an employee, being, being in corporate America or corporate life was far easier than this. Yeah, it was the way I was going about it. I didn't know any other way, but I also didn't fucking ask for help. Because I was so in my ego and self-will, pure insanity. Something else that I wish someone told me, and, and thankfully, once I did have a business coach who's worth $100 million, I've shared that before. So you want to hire someone who is definitely many steps beyond you. You know, where they've done it a long time too, right? And I don't, it doesn't have to be like decades, but like you don't want someone who's just like been in business a year or two, in my opinion. You want someone who's been in it long enough where they've made major mistakes, where they've lost fucking money, where they've had to climb their way back. That's who you want. Not just someone who's like had a, you know, has seems like everything they've touched turned to gold. There's not that much wisdom in that. So I I strongly recommend that. And, you know, he's 75 now, by the way. So there's a lot of wisdom there. And I needed that. You know, my father died before my 25th birthday. So 
there's not um, I didn't have, you know, wisdom, male wisdom in that way. Um, I do get it through my dear long time. I consider him family, Steve. I do get wisdom from him, but he's not um, he's not an entrepreneur. He's not a business owner, but I do get wisdom in in that way. But I really. It felt so validating to hear from this man who's worth all this money, who's been on this worth on this earth many more decades than me saying when I was like, you know, I'm I'm barely hanging on here. You know, this is this is so much. I'm losing my mind. This isn't fun. Why does anyone do this? And he's like, well, number one. You were going about it all wrong, right? Number two, you've not had any help and it's not possible to get to where you want to go without help. And number three, it's part of the it's part of the damn process. And why do you think that you can avoid it? If entrepreneurship, if going after your dreams, if writing that book and starting that podcast, having a successful blog, being, you know, an influencer, being a top speaker, helping tons of people. If that was easy, then tons of people would just leave their jobs and do it. It is there wouldn't be businesses that fail all the time. It is not easy. In fact, when you're going after things you really believe in, it brings up all your unhealed, unresolved shit that lives in your body. It just does. It brings it up. It brings up your insecurities, all of your self-doubts. I mean, I feel like I picture you guys nodding your heads right now. There is, I mean, we think that our insecurities and self-doubts and all, you know, all that shit, you know, limited beliefs come up when we're, you know, in a new relationship and a marriage or whatever. And it, and it does, but you go after your dreams and you're really going all in with it. (laughs) Oh, It comes up and then some, and that's normal and it's supposed to, and it's part of the journey and it's part of the process and you don't get to avoid it, period. End of story. You don't get to avoid it. And not everything you touch is going to turn to gold. I don't care what your background is and your level of expertise. So I want you to give yourself grace for things that you've tried that have failed Maybe you've, you know, tried your tried some kind of group coaching or you've tried some kind of way to get a bunch of people enrolled or whatever it is, or, you know, tried to put a freebie out there and it didn't stick. No one signed up. No one enrolled. You have no, you know, you have no one on your books for a call. It, it didn't do that much. It didn't sell that much. Guess what? Welcome to the damn club. Not, I know what you guys see online. It's like everything this this person, you know, Polly the influencer touches turns to gold and they've just, you know, channeled their manifesting abundance energy. And they and, you know, they had a million dollar launch. They had a six figure launch and everything seems to be working. And what's wrong with me? They're just choosing not to or not comfortable sharing all of the shit show that goes on behind the scenes. Sometimes you'll just have a win, right? You've you've um, aligned things properly. You have help. Um, you have good strategy. You have you know you've really nurtured your audience, and you'll have a big winner. So yeah, you do get thrown a win, right? And then you'll get thrown losses. We it's called the, it's the law of polarity. We don't get to have one without the other. You wouldn't appreciate all the wins if you didn't have all the losses. It wouldn't feel as sweet. It wouldn't feel as good. You would you would take it for granted. But the entitlement I see out there from so many people going, how could this not have worked? Why isn't it working? I've done I'm putting all my effort in is because you're expecting because you're working so hard and you're a good person and you've put in all this effort that it's just supposed to magically work. Well, you know what? I wish it worked like that. If it worked like that, I'd be worth $100 million right now. It doesn't work like that. It takes, it does take time to refine your strategy, refine your messaging, to really get into a flow of what you know 
your ideal client really wants and what works. I've shared it on other episodes. These giant companies, right? Procter and Gamble, Johnson and Johnson, Nabisco, all of them, have, those three in particular have all been clients of mine. There are so many products that they have put out there that flop, but you usually just don't hear about it. Number one, they have big PR teams. They have structures in place because they have, they know right in their, right in all of their spreadsheets, they know there's going to be products they, they put out that don't work. And then the ones that work, they put fuel on the fire to really blow them up. That is part of business. A lot of things don't work, but a lot of things do work as well. But if you're not staying in it long enough, then you're going to quit before those things really work. And if you're not determined and you're not motivated enough to keep refining, stepping back, going, okay, why didn't this work? It's not personal. It's not because I'm a piece of shit and I don't know enough and I'm not meant to be doing this and I'm not you know, I'm not this person and I'm not as confident and I'm not extroverted and I don't have this many followers. It is not because of any of that. I want you to take a step back and be a true business owner and take an objective look at, okay, why didn't this work? Do I really even have a strategy or am I just guessing how to do this, which I know a lot of you are, You know, I'm kind of trying to mimic what other people do out there, but it's not really a customized strategy to convert strangers into paying clients. If you don't have a custom strategy to convert strangers into paying clients in a way that feels good to you, guess what? Your shit is not going to sell and grow. You might have a few sales here and there, but there won't be any consistency, period, end of story. I don't care if your product is earth shattering. I've seen amazing books from clients that have come to me, courses, programs, events, freebies, podcasts that that don't sell, don't do well, don't gain any traction because they have no marketing strategy on how to drive in more of their ideal clients and transition them into paying customers. So That's why. So you don't if you don't have that. And even if you do have that, even if you are someone like me who's done it many times on repeat, you're still going to have things that in your mind don't work. Right. Like something not working for Nabisco means they made 15 million off a product launch. It's really probably way bigger numbers than that, but like 15 million off a product launch versus 275 million. It's all relative, right? And it's like, well, they're not going to keep pouring money into f- something that's making only 15 million. They would be better for them to either go back to the drawing board and create a new product or pour in more resources to the existing products that are already doing well. And that's where you see those weird ass products like pumpkin spice Oreos at the 99 cent store. And it's funny because I just used that example about the weird, the weird like products that go to never, never land at the 99 cent store. They do that. Companies do that to recoup their costs. They're trying to recoup as much of their costs that they put into research, development, advertising, marketing, product creation by getting by at least getting some money back. They're still taking a loss, but some money back by putting them at these discount stores. But there I said that And recently, I just saw, and you guys DM me because it's going to really bother me if I don't figure it out. These little things like rack my brain. Um, I know there's a new Oreo out. I know there's a new one. Um, There was one I was joking about earlier this summer, which it was like a Trolls, like the Trolls movie Oreo. I'm like, that's foul. And that's not going to do well. Um, But there's a new new one out. and it's not pumpkin spice. It was actually something where I was like, well, I could see how that would be good. Oh, my God. They just started advertising it too. DM me at Project Me with Tiffany if you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember. And I'm not like an Oreos person, but Oreos in particular, that product line um, was a client of mine for my other business because I do a lot of I don't just do medical pharmaceutical. I have a um, consumer pr- packaged goods arm to that business. Um, you know, lotions, potions, supplements, food products. 
drinks, that kind of thing. Um, you know, the if you guys remember, do you remember the big program on social media for the Oreo cookie stacking contest? It was a viral social media play. Um, we did that. We were par- involved in that. There are a lot of people involved in it, but we were involved in that. Fun fact. So I want you to know when something isn't working, it isn't sticking, it isn't going well, this is part of it. This is part of it. And you have a choice. Do you keep going? Do you take an objective look and say, what could we do differently here? And say we. You can say I if you want, but I also like saying we because there's a collective committee in your brain, right? You wear so many different hats, especially as like a solopreneur or small business owner. It's like, what can this collective committee, what what can we do differently? Is it hiring someone to help us, hiring someone to guide us? Um, is it taking some kind of course or program to learn how to do something better? What is it? Um, that we could do differently? Is it that we really didn't, we really didn't pull and ask our people um, what they wanted? We assumed what people wanted. Was it my mindset? What is, was it my energy? Was I being desperado? What was it? And take an objective look. I do this around my posts that don't do well. Because we experiment a lot with my posts to see what does well, what doesn't do well. This is how you learn when things fail. Now you learn that you don't need to go in that direction anymore. That's why things that fail or don't do as well are important. Now, you know, okay, that doesn't work. We're not going to go in that direction anymore. So we're going to close that road, right? So I see that with my posts. It's like, I know if I try to cram too much information in a post, you guys don't like it. It feels overwhelming. It's too much for you. You don't have it in you. We're too mentally lazy for it. So I I take an objective view. I don't go, oh my God, no one likes my stuff. People think I'm an idiot. No one respects me. I don't go down that path anymore. I take an objective view and go, okay, what is it about this? Was it the color? Was it the font? Was it the topic? Was it the headline? Was it the words? What was it and what can I do differently? So like with pro- with my um, Project Me Business Academy signature, signature program, Selling with Soul, when I first launched it in February... When you first launch anything, just like there's a new update for, you know, your iPhone or something, there's going to be bugs in it and things you can learn to make it better. And what I learned from that is I launched it as a course where there was no live teaching element for me. And what I learned is people really, as much as they love the course, um, more people would have bought it if there was a live coaching element from me. And so now we have regrouped and turned it into Selling with Soul, the program. So it's an actual program where you get um, full live direct coaching from me around learning how to sell in a way that feels good to you, that actually works, and me teaching you my emotional-based sales techniques that I'm well known for. I want you guys to do this. You need to take some kind of an action and getting help and direction. I by the time this airs, I think there will be maybe two or three 90 minute uh, private coaching spots with me. I know there are definitely a few of you who need that guidance versus waiting. What we can do in 90 minutes and finding a profitable niche for you, getting really clear on a content plan having things mapped out for a launch or next steps, you know, re redesigning your entire bio a lot. We get a lot done in that 90 minutes that you've been spending weeks or months churning over, sweating over in your brain. And in 90 minutes for $497, we can get that done. Um, So that link is in my bio at Project Me with Tiffany, or you can just go to my website, projectmewithtiffany.com under work with me and book it. They might be all gone by the time you hear this, but go over and check out and see if there's any available for you. I highly suggest taking action and doing that. 
I also want to remind you guys that leaving a five star written iTunes review for the month of September, every single review, I'm donating $10 to Children of the Night. So if you've been kind of being lazy and blowing it off, there isn't that much time left and you know you want to help support helping rescue women and children from sex trafficking, this is a small thing that you can do by going to iTunes, leaving a five-star written iTunes review of the show. And all of those reviews are dated. That's how I'm able, we're able to calculate how many reviews. And then I know how much money to donate to my preferred charity, Children of the Night. You can go check out Children of the Night at childrenofthenight.org and see all the amazing things that they do. If you don't know how to leave an iTunes review, guess what? You can Google it and it takes 90 seconds and it's they show you step by step. And if you need a visual, there's even YouTube videos on it. So go do that right now. If you found this episode helpful, take a screenshot, share it on your Instagram stories, tag me at Project Me with Tiffany, and I will likely reshare it. I try to reshare um, several a week. And this also, fun fact, helps drive more followers to your account when you do something like that, especially with an account that's highly engaged like mine. All right. Wishing you guys great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.